Okay, in this video, we're going to be going over a fix that we didn't think to actually, well, we didn't really think about in the previous video. So I'm going to show you that here right now. So we have our client 1 and our client 2. So let's say client 2 grabs that med kit. As you can see, it is gone for client 1. There's no collision or anything like that. Now I'm going to close client 1 and pretend this is client 3 joining the server late or joining in progress. So as you can see here, client 3 comes up and the med kit's still there even though it should be gone and collisions are disabled. Now the reason for that is all we did was disable the collision as well as remove the uh, set the actor to hidden for our clients that were just simply in the game. We have no way of really replicating this to join the progress players currently. And that's what we're going to do right now, actually. So what we're going to switch up is, right now we simply hide the actor in game, and then we multicast our setting of the collision. <coughs> we're going to create a function in our actual pickups, like our actual like our mid kit and stuff like that, that's going to handle that for us. So I'm going to go ahead and create a function, make it public, so void uh, in inventory. I'm just going to pass in a parameter, bool in. So if it is in inventory, we pass in true. If it's not, such as we get killed, we're going to pass in false and we're going to go a different route with it. So here we have it. Let's do our role authority check. So if role equals role authority. So we know we're only running this on the server just to be safe. And we can minimize our use item function since we do not need it currently. And I'm also going to do one thing real quick just that I'm trying to get in the habit of. Instead of setting it to replicate in the begin play, I'm going to start doing that. So B replicates. I want to start doing that in the constructor. Just for habit. So now we have our function here. We're going to be going over on rep replicated variables pretty much. So and I'll show you what those are and how to use them right now. So it's going to be a U property. This is going to be for a variable. We're going to do for the parameter. It's going to be replicate using. And then it's going to be the name of our function, which we'll create here in a second. So we're going to have a boolean. So uh, let's call it object picked up. And now we need our function. Now because we're going to be this is going to be our on rep function, it has to be a U function. We can't just do void whatever. So u function, nothing goes in it. Void on rep. Uh, picked up. Yeah, that'll be fine. Let's create a definition for it. <coughs> okay. So now we are replicating this variable using our on rep picked up function. So when this variable changes, let's say it goes from true to false, this function is going to run on all connected clients and there's something I want to explain as well after this here in a second so first off we need to actually set this variable to replicate so just to save time I want to go ahead and copy wherever it is unless I'm just being completely blind or it's because it's in inventory like an idiot. There we go. So go ahead and copy our get right flame replicated properties. Paste it in. Replace what you need to. And our variable. So in the constructor I'm going to go ahead and set it objects picked up to false by default. And in here this is where we're going to change it. So we're going to set it to object picked up equals n. Let's go ahead and move it down here. So I want to make an example here. Uh, let's just print message. It doesn't do anything. 
So let's say our onRep function prints a message. So that says hello. Well, when in Blueprint it doesn't do this, it does it automatically. But when you're doing it in C++, let's say we change our object picked up variable from false to true. Well, this function here is going to run on all connected clients, so it's going to print a message that says hello. But it will not run on the server. So in order to make it run on the server, you do have to manually call it like so in order to get it to run on the server. Otherwise, just going to run on the clients and nothing more. So what we're going to do is, from our inventory, doo -doo -doo, here we are. Let's go ahead and get rid of all this. And on our item, we're going to call in inventory. And we're going to pass it into true because we're in our add item function. If we were in our remove item, we'd pass in false. And then we would take care of how we want to do it through, well, this. So, we're, the only thing we're calling is our in inventory function, which changes our object picked up value to true. And then, for the server's sake, we're also going to be running our onRep function on the server. So now, in here, here's what we want to hide the mesh, as well as we want to disable the collisions. And this is a point that I want to talk about. Uh, I have a screenshot here that someone sent me this guy. So when you have a object that is both has its collisions disabled and it's hidden, as you can see by this line here, it will return false for its relevancy, meaning, so to put it this way, uh, if I were to hide the actor, so this set actor hidden in game, as well as, uh, what is its collision, set collision, Set actor enable collision. So if we were to hide the object, hide the actor as well as disable its collision, it is no longer going to be relevant. So let's say we have client one that is in the server currently, and client two that is not on the server yet. So client one picks up the medkit. The medkit disappears for all connected clients where that medkit is relevant. And then client two joins the server. Client two is still going to see that medkit there, and that's because its relevancy, now that it's hidden and it has no collision, is going to return false, meaning it's just not relevant. So that's why, like, if, for example, that if I just hide the actor, the actor will be hidden for that client too. Or if I just disable its collision, then the medkit will no longer have collision for client two as well. So one way to get around this is instead of hiding the actor, actor itself, we simply hide the mesh. So our mesh component, uh, what is it? Set hidden in game, and we set it to our replicated variable. So this will make it so the, ob the actual item itself stays relevant, it is hidden, and it has no collision. So that means it will replicate because it's still going to be relevant, it's going to replicate and fire this onRep event on client 2 when he joins the server. So let's go ahead and build that. Oh, and the reason here, as you can probably assume, why there's an exclamation point in front of the boolean. Uh, what, I forget. 22. Did I forget something? Let's go so I have the editor open. Yeah. There we go. So, remember this is true or false. When you add an exclamation point, it makes it the opposite of what it is. Damn it. So, if it is true. So if object picked up is true, and we had an exclamation point in front of it, it's going to make that value false. So we set hidden game, the value is true, we want it to be true. For collision, we don't want it to have collision, so we want it to be false. So we do the opposite of what we're doing for our hidden. Right, am I missing something stupid here?
Or is it replicated? It might be replicated. Which it was, so that makes sense now. Alright, so let's go ahead and run. Launch dedicated server and client one. So I'm going to pick up the medkit. As you can see, it's disappeared. Now let's go ahead and launch up client two and join him in the server late. As you can see, the medkit is no longer there for client two even though he joined in the server after the medkit had been picked up. And it's still going to work all the same for just picking up items normally. So I'll pick up the food can on the client too. If I can hit it. Food can's gone. And it's gone on client 1. And there's no collisions there. Except for the objects that are, well, we didn't interact with. So let's go ahead and go through and reiterate real quick. What we're doing now, instead of immediately just hiding the actor and disabling its collision, we are instead, well, we created a function on the actual item itself that dictates whether or not the item is going to continually be in our inventory. So since we are picking up this item to put it in our inventory, we're setting it to true. I mean, we're passing in true, sorry. So in there we do our server check, make sure we are in fact the server, which we should be anyways. And we toggle this variable that is initially false to true. Well, because it is a replicated variable set to using our onrep picked up function, when this goes from true to false on all the clients, it is going to automatically run this bit of code here, but it will not run on the server. So to force it to run on the server, we have to manually call it. And remember, we're in the server anyway, so that's fine. So that goes for even join in progress clients as well. So when you join a progress client, it's going to have that value set as false because obviously it's in the constructor. And then it's going sometime a little, I believe a little bit before begin play, it is going to get, or maybe even during, it is going to receive that the variables changed. So it's been replicated to that client that joined in late, meaning this code is going to run on that client that join in late. So in turn it's going to hide the object and it is going to disable its collision. It's as simple as that. Now if, let's say we die. All we're going to have to do to show the item is simply do item in inventory just pass in false and it will show the item and bring back its collision. The only thing we'll have to do in here is since this is an actor component, we will pretty much just be doing get owner and getting our own character, our survival character's position, and just our position, and we're going to be setting the item somewhere around our character's position. So whether or not, just kind of like in within a random radius of ourselves. And that's going to be in the next tutorial since this is kind of just a halfway point to fix something that I felt was really important to point out. So we can actually go ahead and remove our multicast function real quick since that is no longer going to be needed. All right, we are good to go. I uh, will see you in the next one where we, heck I don't even know, probably something about taking damage.